The first scenario that we're talking about is what happens when Azure hosts name resolution on its own. And this is what happens by default when you deploy a virtual machine in a virtual network or really any resource that's attached to a virtual network. There's a very interesting reason why we like that, why we choose to do something like that. And there's a very interesting reason that we're going to lead into in the next video where we want a hybrid of that environment. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for you in this intro. We're actually going to jump into the board right now and talk about what scenario one is and that's where we let Azure host the name resolution service. Let's go. When we deploy resources in Azure, specifically when we deploy a virtual network, this box right here is going to represent my virtual network called VNet1. When we deploy these resources here, something magical happens beneath the scenes, something magical that you may not have realized. For instance, if I were to deploy a couple virtual machines, attached to this virtual network. Or maybe I actually deploy a SQL server. This is going to be a uh, SQL managed instance. This is going to be like platform as a service, but it attaches to the actual virtual network. Or maybe I deploy a service endpoint that attaches to the virtual network. The point is, is I can attach all sorts of Azure resources into my own private virtual network and something fascinating happens under the scene that you may not have realized. All of these resources receive a fully qualified domain name. That's right, a resolvable domain name, fully qualified domain name. So my virtual machines that have their NICs, they're attached, or my SQL server that has their NICs, they're attached, it receives a fully qualified domain name. Now the thing that you should be aware of is these domain names all end with cloud app .net. And specifically, there's a couple things that are resolved in front of that. Let me kind of clear up the screen just a little bit so that you understand. What happens here in this section, I'm not going to call it an octet, but this section is going to be like a random GUID looking thing. I'm just going to put ABC123. And this ABC123, this actually represents the VNet itself that we're connected to. And then what comes before that is going to be the resource name. For instance, if this VM right here was just called VM1, it would look like this. So we'd have VM1, which is the host name, then this long GUID, this I put ABC123 here for this example, that's actually the VNet, and then it ends with cloudapp.net. So when we spin up all of these resources, like a virtual machine or a SQL server or an app service, whatever the case is, and it's attached to the VNet, the interesting thing that happens is there are a few levels of configurations and settings. First of all, the VNet itself has its own DNS configuration. You can identify the DNS servers if you want to, or by default, it points to Azure DNS servers. Specifically, the Azure DNS server is 168. Dot 63.129.16. Dot dot that is the Azure DNS server, and this is what is used to resolve all of the name resolution that takes place. But there is a little gotcha. When I deploy this VNet here, this VNet, let's call it VNet1 again, and it's in the central US, I deploy all of my resources like my VMs, my SQL database, and everything like that. What's interesting that happens is all of those resources by default can resolve each other. With no problem, they can just connect to the other one. They can do NS lookup for my neighbor, my VM2, and it'll automatically know its domain that it should append onto it, the cloudapp.net cloud domain, and it has no problem looking it up. But if I deploy a second VNet, let's call this VNet2 in the mix right here, and I deploy this in the West US, I'll deploy some VMs in here. Let's call it VM3 and VM4. Well, guess what? These two, again, by default, they have the exact same DNS server, the 168, 63, 129, 16, and they can resolve each other, no problem, but they cannot resolve VMs from one VNet to the other. They can only resolve the VMs that are within the same VNet. And that kind of makes sense if you actually think about it. Do you want anybody else out of all of the tenants out of all Azure to be able to come along and just perform some NS lookups and find your resources? Probably not. That would probably be a bad thing, right? Just to have that kind of open resource. So in order to make that actually work, that takes some extra configurations and that's outside the scope of this video. For right now, what we wanted to focus in on was the fact that Azure does host name resolution services by default. We know the IP now 168, 63, 129, 16, and they only resolve resources 
that are within the same virtual network and to get them to resolve additional resources takes some additional work. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is where name resolution is actually configured. We talked about this up front uh, a little bit where we said name resolution can be configured at the VNet level. So we can say for all resources that attach to this VNet, they should use this specific DNS server. But you can override that at a more specific level. For instance, when we deploy a virtual machine, it has a virtual NIC that's attached to it. And that NIC attaches to the virtual network. At the NIC level, we can say override the VNet settings and use this specific virtual server. So I could actually deploy a domain controller right here, and I could deploy multiple virtual machines in this virtual network but I could say only for specific virtual, machi virtual machines, use the domain controller for name resolution services. The rest of them are fine to keep using the Azure name resolution. So you do have that flexibility. You could either say all virtual machines in this VNet should use the domain controller. If that's what you wanted to do, you could just set it at the, the VNet level, or you could use something more specific, like only this virtual machine should use the domain controller that's attached to the VNet. The point that you should know is that there are these scenarios where you can override it, and that's really what we're gonna be talking about in the next set of videos. Now, for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the actual portal and take a look at how these virtual machines behave by default and how does name resolution actually look and feel from the portal. So this has been understanding how Azure hosted DNS works. Now in the next video, we're gonna jump into the portal and take a look. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for